Hello, I'm Michael Swords, and I'm an antique sword collector. I have a deep passion for historical weapon design and manufacture. Today, I'm going to talk to you about one of the designs I saw in the recent Netflix trailer for the Witcher series. Now, this sword is carried by the Nilfgaardians, and contrasts very strongly to the armour they're wearing, which is atrocious in every sense of the word. It looks like a plasticised rubbish bag. The swords, however, are pretty good. They're actually based on two different historical Venetian designs. Let's examine those in detail. The most distinctive feature of this sword is the blade. It features a scalloped spine, which is very uncommon to see in the historical record. However, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York actually has a sword with this exact blade profile. It's an Italian storta or falchion from around the 15th century. As you can see in the scrolling image on screen now, it has the exact same design features as the Netflix adaptation. It's a little bit narrower and is in fact uncommonly narrow for a historical falchion. It is, however, a very good example of what sort of artistic license historical smiths used to take. As there is no functional reason to have this scallop spine, it is entirely aesthetic and serves to beautify the object, which is befitting considering the level of decoration that we see on the rest of the sword, including its handle. But the handle is very different to the one we see in the Netflix trailer. That comes from a different Venetian design. In order to have a look at that handle, let's shift from an antique museum example to this reproduction by Albion, which I'm using because they have extremely high quality photos available under a Creative Commons license. You can see that this sword, dubbed the Doge by Albion, has a very similar teardrop-shaped pommel to the one used in the Netflix trailer. This distinctive teardrop-shaped pommel is a entirely Venetian design and was extremely popular for a brief period of time. It acts as a counterbalance to the heft of the blade, and enhances the handling characteristics and balance of the sword. Like any pommel, it can also be used to bash your opponent, and the teardrop shape may even enhance its bashing abilities, as it concentrates force onto a smaller area. It's normally not paired with a falchion blade, but in some cases it actually was. The Netflix adaptation takes a few different Venetian falchion design cues and combines them together into one. However, it's not entirely impossible that a historical sword exactly like the one in the Netflix Witcher series actually existed. All of these design aspects are from the same time period. They're all physically possible to do with the metallurgy of the day, and they all make some level of sense. The blade is broader than the Metropolitan Museum example, but assuming it has the right cross-section, it would actually be a relatively nimble and very powerful cutter. With the combination of the relatively simple crossguard and the extended teardrop pommel, it could have very desirable handling characteristics. It would, however, be a relatively expensive sword to make, as falchions with their broad but thin blades, and in this case, decorative scallop spine, were already relatively difficult to make. Adding onto that the extended teardrop pommel and the downswept quillons, this would have been a pretty premium sword to make, which is strange in the context of arming an entire army with them, but makes more sense if you look at the relative wealth of Nilfgaard. Anyway, I just thought I'd point out that while their armour is trash, their swords are actually pretty good. Well done, Netflix. This has been Ipo Swords. Until next time, stay sharp.